Yeah. We'll give it a minute to get the seasickness out. I, I think we should keep it like that the whole time. You see the going, right? Yeah. yeah. Hello, homeschoolers. Hello, what's going on, guys? Hello, people. Episode two of the famous monthly grooms get together. Right. Have we come up with a name for this thing yet? No. I thought we were doing homeschooling. At Goes groom. to grooms. Goes to grooms. Goes to grooms. Episode two. Yeah. That's right. I got uh, dearest Greggy Voros, dearest Corey. Don't tell me. Last name. You taught me last time. Corey. Don't you watch this channel, man? <laughs> Don't you a subscriber to this? <laughs> uh, first letter. T. T. Terrell? Yeah. Terrell. I nailed it. Corey Terrell. How do you spell it? Like Tammy Terrell? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah so, but, you know, she's good. my. Uh, She's, she's not related. She's not me. related. Um, we got some cool stuff today. Uh, we went through the store, grabbed how many guitars, boys? Two, four, seven, six, seven, seven guitars, eight. Eight, eight guitars, eight guitars, seven okay. electrics, electronic guitars, and an acoustic guitar. One acoustical. Yeah, acoustical that we thought were really good. Um, before we get going, I have I've been thinking about this. Um, you you handle a lot of the floor traffic down there, uh, and do you handle a lot of the floor traffic lately? No. Have you been down there a lot? Yeah, lately? yeah I, mean, I go. I go down down there. There. You've been yeah. down there. Okay, a fair amount. Um, okay. Biggest pet pe personal pet peeves about the w the way things people might say or things they might do when they come to groom guitars for you personally as a salesman and both both you guys. What are some of the things that that uh, really bother you, like the way? people do certain things it's not that it bothers me but it's that uh, people aren't allowed to freely look around right and and I think that people think especially when they come into groom guitars there's such the, uh, a stigma associated with right. groom guitars as being like you know the right. top of the line and, right. and the guitar shop in the world right. And what I try to do, and I do a pretty good job, I think I do a pretty good job of uh, kind of allowing people to relax and not right. be on guard so right. much and be able to look and see right. freely. Because no responsible person wants to be watched that closely. Because no, and they like, shouldn't be watched. Yeah, we remember that the closely. days of walking into the guitar store who you could just grab whatever you want off the wall. Yeah. Boy, I, I, like, I still like that. Well, you day. know what's crazy is, is over the years, I've heard this going on for almost 20 years here at Grooms, yeah. and you've heard about it for so long. I still yeah. hear this, where people are like, uh, Grooms is cool, can you, can you pick up guitars and play them now? Or are you allowed to pick up the guitars now and right. play them? And I was or, thinking to myself, I've been here for 20 years, and we encourage everyone to play everything. Right. That was never you have for the whole time. I, I've never been here where a person couldn't walk in and play every single instrument right. and leave. I mean, that's just how it is. Right. There was a certain guitar store that I won't mention any names uh, down in uh, the southern part of Nashville. I don't know if it's still around or not, but man, I've never seen a place that was more uptight than this place, man. And uh, I swear, I remember one time the owner was talking to one of the guys that worked there and said, he said, man, what are you doing? The guy was working on an acoustic guitar. He said, I'm just restraining this guitar. Uh, and he goes, you're not wearing the gloves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, these people are so worried about something happening to the back of one of these new guitars. I mean, come on. I don't know. I don't know who that's looking to impress, you know, oh, or what that's God. looking to do, because it just doesn't work like that. But when you ask that question, you know what? I, 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 you had a good one. That's a great one. For me, it's it's improved. Yeah. Over the years. Yeah. But um, usually, when folks are looking to get repair work done, it still has the stigma of going to buy a used car. Does it? Yeah. Like unless you know you're a pro and you've been around. Yeah. If if you move to town or you you're looking to get somebody to work on your instrument. I went into this in, at great length about how guitar repairs isn't a legitimate trade. So I understand why they're frustrated because they can't get work done right. But when they come in on their on their back legs totally. and they're like, well, what are you, what are you measuring your nut slots to? Right. Uh, it's like, well, you know, I, I get where you're from, bro. You, uh, you've had a horrible gosh. time finding a, a repair guy. We have this dialed in here, yeah, you know, yeah. and they usually get talked off, you know, and then we're cool. Don't worry. Everything's going to yeah, be all right. But yeah. even at Gruden's, you still... 
have some of that sometimes. Well, yeah. I know. I notice that you have a knack of speaking with the everyday guy. It's because I am an everyday guy. <laughs> That's right. He puts his pants on one You're like an every time. other day guy. Uh, but the everyday person, I should say, that comes in, maybe, and, and this goes along with what you were saying, maybe that they, they've gotten the whole, you know, kind of spiel from other stores. That's right. Maybe other repair places want to appear like they're a little bit sure. on a, right. on a on a high, at a higher caliber, but yeah. uh, but I find that when I when I overhear you or when I when I am involved in a conversation with you and the person who who comes in, they always end up understanding exactly what's going on and right. they feel comfortable within sure. just a few minutes. Right. Right. Um, He's very very disarming. Personality. But but you know what it is is he knows how to speak to people. Yeah. He knows in two minutes he picks up on yeah. how they are and he communicates almost like speaking their language. Read the room and read the room. exactly read, read the room, room. Yeah. and and that's a that's a that's a skill I think totally. that everybody here totally. really has nice. yeah. on you know for their own merits. Not to mention we're also encouraged like uh, like you know time is very important um, especially when you have. Every person here has a very specific gig. We don't have a hundred people at Grove Guitars. Right. So when you're here, you have a very specific job, mm -hmm. and and you're you're really moving along so others can really work in this beautiful way. Yeah, it's a dance. So yeah, but we're also encouraged to spend um, hours on end with customers, yeah. explaining to them what's yeah. going on, hanging and and, yeah. and doing, and not not necessarily for for a sale or anything like that. You're just kind of there to almost educate, to tell folks about this business. What about sense. when people come in with with guitars that that may not be really collectible or very blue chip guitars, but they act like it's a, like it's a Well that's you have to be diplomatic. Yeah. I mean I've seen that happen down it's, there. Like like here's a I brought this in uh nineteen seventy eight J forty five. That's right. Here it is. You right. know, the heirlooms like the herringbone mark. Yeah. The heirlooms are tough because yeah. to that person it's it's worth more than five herringbones. Totally. You know but you can't put a price tag you on can't daddy's a, guitar. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And and no matter how you slice well, depending on how much uh, love affair or who owned it prior right. to them as the heirloom, there there's so much in there that you really gotta handle that you know, with kid gloves in a sense. Totally. Because Anything that you say about the instrument is disrespectful to the Absolutely. ancestor that's lost. So, Dude, if you, so even much. if you call it a student grade instrument, right. which is might have been what it is, yeah. Well, my my uncle was a professional. Well, right. hey, I get it. Right, 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 uh, right. It's you, you. There, there's a there's bedside manner. I've there. seen people make comments on my channel that are still carrying baggage from 30 years ago when George made them a low offer on their guitar. They don't forget. They don't no, forget. They, they don't forget. Well, I got some uh, comments. Or what they considered too. to be a low offer. Well, you know what I mean? considering like 30 years you know, ago, bro, like yeah. you can get a Sunburst Les Paul from 59 yeah. for, for what, 25 grand? Right. Or, Probably less. Yeah. Right? So yeah. when people say, you know, like 30 years ago, George Green right. offered me $500 for a guitar that's worth $15,000 today. Right. Yeah, bro, but in 92. Right. But that was $15,000 right. in 1992. Exactly. That was, you exactly. know, do the math. Exactly. So, we, there, you know, and even back then, there's a formula that yeah. we have. And that formula is pretty straightforward that we tell everyone it, it, in order know, to operate a business. I, st I, I understand people's, uh, you know, that carryover. It's almost like they feel like they've been slighted. Right. Sure. Um, when in yeah. fact, I'm positive, listen, I wasn't there. You weren't there, you weren't right. there. Um, do you think that George really meant to slight somebody? He probably did not mean that at all. It was just, he's very focused. When he sees something, he knows what the value yeah. of it is. He and, also, and he's yeah. just very direct. Cool. And there's also something to be said for, you know, Groom Guitars is made up of, of, you know, quite a few employees and each employee here makes quite a few moves and that's been the case for a number of decades, totally. however, Every single move that's made at Groom Guitars goes back to George Groom. That's, that's right. right. So you know the, the the instrument that someone has questions about or concerns or whatever it might be, George might not even be aware of it. There right. could have been three managers and two salespeople and one repair mm -hmm. guy that handled that deal thirty two years ago. That's right. But he gets the blame, that's you know, right. or or whatever he gets. So yeah, that's a really I, good point because it's a really that's, interesting thing. You know, that's something that a lot of people don't have. They don't see the behind the scenes. Not that they're supposed to, they're not supposed to, but they don't see the behind the scenes, and that's an excellent, uh, that's an excellent right. point. Yep. You know, I, I know, 
I know for a fact that I get asked about guitars on a daily basis, and it's at least a dozen guitars where I'm telling the people all about it. That has nothing to do with George. I've never yeah, run it past right. George because George is busy doing something else. Right. He hired me to take right. care of that. That's right. Um, if he didn't think that I was capable of doing it, he wouldn't have hired me. Right. Or I still wouldn't. Remember, remember that time? Remember that time? You didn't have to go back very far where people actually thought that George Groom taught me how to repair guitars. Right. You, you know, it's right. like, did George right. Groom show you how to do these tricks? Right. No, of course not. That's not what George does. No. But what George does is that he appreciated guitar repairmen. That's right. Uh, before Very anybody so. else did. That's right. And this was going 50 yeah. years ago. He That's had right. respect for guitar. And, and, and think of the repair guys that have come, come through the yeah. Bill Collings. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone from Gilchrist to uh, Andy Jellison to yeah. Paul McGill to. Yeah, you're right. Paul the the McGill. list is, yeah. is Matthew Klein. The list is unbelievable. You know, so, you right. know, uh, Groom Guitars is. So it's, it's, it's obvious mm -hmm. that he okay. gives a lot of cr credit. Yeah, but George is. To that. A refresh that he does himself are not great. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should, but you know, he just should, got his eyes fixed, so they're a little <laughs> better now. We should get George to tell the story of him trying to shoot a sunburst finish. Oh, I Lord. think uh, Randy Wood. He was working Randy Wood in the late 60s, and, and, and Randy was trying to teach him how to shoot a sunburst finish. And he was just like, I'm better at buying and selling these things. Amazing. You leave it to Randy. Amazing. <laughs> Boys, uh, we brought, we handpicked, people say handpicked. We, 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 we actually handpicked We handpicked these, hand -picked yeah. these fine yeah. instruments. Uh, uh, tell us about this guitar we're playing, Corey. It's a 55 Telecaster. 55 Telecaster. Early white guard, yeah? Yep. Fairly early? Yep. Uh, uh, n known for, for being awesome. Known for being, known for coming for right after the black guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'll known for you, not being a black guard. Known for not being a black yeah. guard. It, yeah. uh, I'll say this one thing. You know what's really cool about this, all these instruments that we pulled? That, the, that, it had zero to do with the price point. So totally. there, there, there's instruments here for a couple of grand, all the mm -hmm. way up to sixty plus thousand dollars. It's couple, irrelevant. I mean, That's we got not, a couple of melody makers yeah. right here. So the reason uh, we were pulling some guitars is because we thought they were cool. And I, I'm just want to make some mention of this. Right. Price, price is great, but it rarely has to do with cool. Right? That's right. Price does not equal cool. No, man. I, I, I the, like chopper guitars, guitars that are beat over clean guitars yeah. or whatever it might be, go against yeah. the vintage collection or whatever. But for for, for yeah. people that really understand and appreciate these instruments, um, you can have a twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred dollar. That's right. Whatever it might, Bruno Archtop guitar from the whatever is yeah. that's so incredible and it's beautiful. Yeah. And and I'd much rather have that than most other guitars. Yeah. So it has very little to do with the price. We're actually. We love this. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, price has nothing to do with it. Well, the cool Lord loves a chopper. He loves a chopper. Yeah, man. Everybody loves choppers. You can have fun with them. You can change shit. You can customize yeah. them a little bit. You don't feel bad about disturbing a solder. Or just, or just playing the guitar. Or just playing the guitar. You know, you don't want to buy a guitar to not play it. Uh, but this is, and, and it and it comes to, to this this other point, and I'll, and I'll let you do, do your thing, but... Um, you know, collecting guitars and buying guitars at the this price point or, or this vintage, this particular model, if you think about it, what else is there that you can invest in? Right. Where your right. investment is going to go up in value right. while you're using whatever right. it is you've invested in. Are you going to deal with a, with, a, with, a, with a car? No. You can buy a car, but you can't drive the car. Because you're going to put miles on the car, and as soon as you put one mile on the car, it's, it goes down in value. That's right. Um, what, a painting? Yeah. I mean, what do you, you're not really using it, you're putting no. it on the wall. Something like this is functional art. You can hang it on the wall, and then you can pick it up and play it, and then you can put it back. And I could appreciate... I love that. I could appreciate a guitar on the wall sure. as much as a painting, but you can't pick up the painting and, and play on it. No, right. and the painting, the, you know, the, this, this, is, this is going up in value while you use it. This thing's worth more now than it was at the start of this video. <laughs> <laughs> you talk to me. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh. Thank you. 
flat pole. Beautiful. Maple boards. Beautiful. Uh, nice V-neck. Yeah, V-neck. Oh, God. Like, like a V-neck sweater. It's got, got, a, got the original wiring here. You got your... Uh, both pickups in the middle. You got the muddy dark thing. Nice big full neck. I, I love this guitar. How much is it? How much is it? I'll take it. Want to guess? Um, I have no idea. White guard, 40? 40. Got the original case? I'll take it. Uh, and the original, the original yes, Astra. Astra. Did you ever notice? We were just, I was just talking about this in one of my last videos, how different guitar sounds with the Astra on it. Yes. It's amazing. It's true, yeah. And how many players play with the Astra? Because uh, I know you got a thing about dude, it. Dude, I have such a thing. I have to have a little bit of lacquered left. I cannot stand it. But you don't want that sticky lacquer. Oh no. I do not like there's a there's a company that makes guitars now. A newish company that's been around for a long time. I just don't like the sticky. It's very sticky. We'll, we're, we're gonna, gonna we're, we're gonna get into that. that. We're gonna get into uh, that. Yeah. I like when you can feel the lacquer, but it's nice and hard and worn and slippery. I don't like it when shit is sticky. Yeah, but you don't want it sanded through. No, I can't. That's sanded uh, through finish. Uh, that's hate, something I that I know it. you don't like it because you just told me it's it. again but, for the millionth time. But when you have finish on it and, and it gets sticky with the lacquer, you actually can hear it. It's like a basketball, yeah. court, you know, as you're moving around. And that's probably one of the biggest complaints that I've heard you say. And a lot of folks, too, when they're cooking up the neck, Oof. that feeling on your hand, that stickiness. Hate it. It's it's like outdoor uh, gigs. When oh, you're with I that. bet, yeah, bro. Oh lord, I, this is perfect. Feel yeah. that. It's nice. It's a badass guitar. You want to switch? Yeah, let's switch. You want this? Uh, let's move on to what do you the uh, Gibson Electric Spanish. Uh, is it true that the that the ES Electric Spanish guitars the number was actually the price in the early days? Yes, I've heard about this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Same thing with the J's. What is it? J200 supposed to be the supposed to be the, supposed to be the story of it. J200 right? was 40, the, 50, 200, that right? 85, yeah. 45s. Yeah. We've got a um, yeah, this is nice. Super 400. We've got which would make sense because that's pricey for back in those days. Think about it. That telly is badass, right? That's a, that's a fucking nice guitar. This is the jam right here, that's man. Nice guitar. This, right. this would probably be if if George would let me take one of these. I, I'd probably take this telly. I mean, it's over nice. over everything. I, we, and you can't see, but you're gonna see. We yeah. have we have a bunch of great uh, great guitars lined up to show you guys. Here's um, a here's a early three thirty five bound. Yep, probably uh, bound fifty eight. Late fifty eight. Yes, late. Um, beautiful set of uh, patent of fly fork pickups in there. Oh lord, plays great. What a great neck. Nice and chunky. Fret job? Lynn Krause. Lynn Krause. He actually did the uh, he did the fret job and he rebounded as well. Rebounded? Yeah. He rebounded. He did a beautiful job. Dude. Here's the bridge over here. This is like, 
You can. Oh, you can get Let's all up inside this thing. Let's hear that, man. Yeah, man. Oh, Lord, man. Oh. <laughs> Balance between two figures. Street Fighter, man. This one wants to go. It wants to get in the back alley. Do a little fighting, man. That's a nice one. What's that thing cost, man? 60, right there. 65. 65. 65. Damn. Oh, this is this is. I gotta tell you something. This thing that was special. Yeah. Oh, dude. That's, that was super special, man. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. That was uh, cool. Man. You know, and you yeah. noticed right away. Oh, you were dude. like, these yeah. strings. Oh, these strings. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That just makes you want to get in there. But it. But you. You dug in oh. and you manned up on that thing, man. Oh. That thing sounded pretty fucking great. Dude, what a nice guitar, brother. You know what's crazy too is is from this angle, I'm able to see your right hand yeah. on the tan on it. Yeah. 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 Dude, it's very interesting. And we, uh, yeah, but yeah. the upstrokes and and and, and uh, yeah. I remember um, you probably talked about this a bunch yeah. of times in how when you hammered a high E, yeah, you always stabbed from the bottom. Yeah, you always stab it, and you went into how it sounds different. Yeah, but as you were just playing right now, you were stabbing the E B and the G. Yeah, and it was yeah, but you, it was all uniform. You never went down on them. Yeah, don't. All come up. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize I was doing that until years later. I was just looking for the right sound. But know? then when you were when, when you were strumming, yeah, that strumming pattern that you had was all downs. Yeah, those are all downs. And then when you went into the single notes, you were stabbing up. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, it's cool. Any I mean, it's it's just, your way up. You yeah. doing? You going to the acoustic now? Yeah, I'm going to acoustic. Uh, I haven't tuned it yet, but I got a feeling we're going to be all right. Here's the uh, ashtray for your 55 Tele. I don't want to confuse that. Look at this beast. What is this, Greggy? Well, we got a 30, 1931 OM28 shade top. 31? Yeah. God, it's early. Yeah. The shade top, the Sunburst Martins, all the Sunburst Martins from the 30s and into the early 40s like this, um, they're all called shade tops. You know, um, shade top Martins. That's only a Sunburst uh, Martin.
fantastic guitar. Jesus. So dry, the mid-range content is like party time. I was just asking if you, because oh, I know that when you were here, you were checking out the J2 yeah, yeah, yeah. and the White Falcon. Yeah, which I bought and loved. Which you bought both of. Yes. Refinish, this, refinish back in size. Refinish back in size. Yeah, okay. Refinish back what in size. That, that's not bar frets, right? That's too early. Too early. Oh, that's bar, that's bar, bar frets. frets. Yeah, it's bar frets in 31. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. And check it out. Here's a, a cool way for, for folks. Wow. Here's a little, little, I don't know, vintage guitar trick. But if you ever you ever look at a flat top guitar, and if you ever see that type of checking on the binding, that's uniform, but you don't see that checking carry out to the rest of the instrument, only over the binding. It's kind of hard to see, but it's this the straight checking pattern, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. That's always indicative of, of a refinish, mm. because the plastic re reacts in that way when you use a chemical stripper on it. Mm. So if any time an instrument's been chemically stripped and the finish comes off, you could put new finish back on, but it would have done something to the binding where you can't get away from that um, that look right there. I see. You know, I wonder if you can show the camera that. Let me see if I can get a cool yeah. look on that. It's uh, got some cracks and things. That's it. Yeah, it's got some stuff. Flare, flare wear, yeah. man. Nice old, I mean, fuck, the thing's almost 100 years old. 45, not yeah, good right. That's dudes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get a good... That's a cool guitar, man. It's kind of tough to see it, but it would be here along the binding. There's checks that go down. Um, anytime, you, you see a lot of that happen. This one, you can tell that the back and sides have at least overspray on it right. because of all the cracking, and you could see the, the finish. This right. thing's in about the same condition I'm in. <laughs> It really is. That's how I feel. Just it's a little a older than you, but it looks a little better than you. <laughs> Refinished back. It so, looks like, yeah. <laughs> Sounds pretty good there, bro. Yeah. What do you got there, okay. Corey? This is this is your personal favorite. Isn't it? This is my. This is this thing is just so freaking cool, man. Did you know Al Kaelin? I did not know him personally. Okay. I believe he wasn't around by the time I was. I came okay. into this earth, but uh, session guy. Yeah, session guy. Yeah. Uh, but he, this this model, this is an Epiphone, this is a 66, okay. and uh, they made two different models. They didn't make them for very long. What I like about this guitar is it's Gibson-esque sure. by its look, like almost like a 330 without the F-holes, right. right? Right. But it's got a 25 and a half inch scale, so it's got right. like a Fender right. scale. That's kind of cool. So we're 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 on to a couple of things. No f holes, so it's probably it's not going to be easy to make it feedback. It's going to be kind of feedback resistant. Early chrome if, parts. Exactly. Early chrome. Early chrome. This is this is one of the so people some people may be familiar with a varitone control. A varitone control, like if you've seen a BB King Lucille. Yeah. You've seen that that chicken head knob. Yeah. And what that does is you're basically dialing it to a preset something that it's pulling out certain frequencies and allowing basically one particular frequency through well instead of having the chicken head rotary style knob this has switches and you can switch through and there's little capacitors on the inside of there that it's just running through capacitors and one pickup on or the other pickup uh, on you can't have them both on i love your accent do me a favor yeah say Say this sentence for me. I'm gonna say this. Uh, my cousin Larry just got married, and he's he also loves a baritone. Say that. My cousin Larry just got <laughs> married, and he also loves a a baritone. We're, 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 and they're from Wontaw. And they're from Wontaw, Long Island. 
The way Everybody you said, from Wontaw, Long Island? <laughs> the way you said baritone a minute ago. Yeah. Baritone? How do you uh, say it? I, well, I'm from Cleveland. I say baritone. How is he saying it differently than what I'm saying? Well, uh, you know, we all have our different dialects. Uh, I like the way you say, you sometimes will put, uh, you, you'll say the word string, but you'll, you'll make it string. I don't know why I do that. I love that. I don't know why I do that. Is that a New York thing? I, I don't know. I don't string. I think he's just, I think it just string. likes, he likes the way it sounds. It's cool. You just like yeah. the way it sounds? Uh, yeah, I guess so. String. String. You know, you're right. You're funny. I read, I, I read a comment. Where somebody actually wrote down like S H H H H T R I N G. Well, I purposely say the word P I E Z O wrong because I just think it sounds cool. How do you say it? Yeah, how do you say it? I say it piezo. I just think it sounds cool. That's right. I say piezo. That's how I like fancy piezo. Is it piezo or piezo? I've heard it both ways, and I just never. No one ever corrects me, and I never correct anybody else. It's supposed to have three syllables. Piezo. Yeah, but if nobody says it like that. You can't say it like that. It's Piezo. It's Piezo. You can't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know how any of this shit works, but let's just talk about the guitar first. Uh, aside from all this shit, which I don't know how to work it, I'm just going to play the guitar for a minute. Okay, it doesn't seem to have the narrow nut width that a 66 is normally uh, hindered by. It's not, it's not a Gibson. It's not a 330. Right. It's an Alcayola. So not only does it not have that, but also remember it's got the longer neck scale. It doesn't have a 24 and 3 quarter. Well, it couldn't play any better than it plays. It plays amazing. Yeah, these are like 335s or 330s. 330. It'll have a sustained one, right? No block. No block, right? No block. Right. You can burn Trapeze. Trapeze. So, I mean, you're, you're talking 330 yeah. as like your base. Yeah. You designed this. Yeah. But the 330 with no F holes, man, that does it. It's not great. Tuning. It's in tune. Cool. Guitar's in tune with itself. It's a fantastic instrument. Okay. That's like an out of phasey kind of sound, right? What else we got? Man, this thing is a recording dream. You could do all kinds of shit with this, right? Can you imagine just that's your only guitar, you don't have anything else, you've got this, you'd be pretty happy with, Boy, with this. this. Big tone.
guitar. Now, okay. we were talking about cool guitars and versus price point. Yeah, You're talking about 5,000 bucks, yeah. man. Yeah, I got that. One. Truly a vintage instrument, <laughs> not a vintage price point. Oh, man, that sounds great. You know who would love this guitar? Would love this guitar. Who would love that? Dan Narbach would love this. If he doesn't, if I'm he doesn't already have one, he may have one. That's so his style. This is cool, dude. Yeah. This is really cool. It's got a sleeper. Sleeper. I can't believe how good it plays. Yeah. I mean, the neck is lovely. I keep waiting for a dog to show up here. They're not showing up. Super lightweight for those that love these. Uh, two pickup variants. So mm. both of the melody makers are D's, which is gonna mean double pickup. Right. Boy, uh, just unbelievable neck, like all of them have. I mean, the profile is just perfect, right? I mean, these are old growth Honduran mahogany, budget guitars, even the best even the, the cheapest guitars you're making a Brazilian rosewood board. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing. Right. This year, this wood was 100 years old when they were yeah, making think these guitars. Right? That's, the, the wood could have been 100 years old when, when they got the wood to make for these. But, I mean, they were using Brazilian until, what, 69? Look yeah. how beautiful that Tori's got. You probably can't see it. Jesus, man. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. Not known for their super powerful pickups. <laughs> Two of them in the under covers of fiber pickup. Yeah. Can we go with that? That's... <laughs> you had me for the first minute. Of... See these, you know, what a lot of people do with these guitars, you know, and I'm not suggesting you know where I'm going with this. Round it out and put buckets yeah, in. These it? pickups never And who did that? A lot of people. Who did that? Everybody. 
Who? Pretty much everybody. You you probably know. Uh, uh, well, yeah, but you know, Pat Travers. Uh, you probably did. Yeah. Know that. Who else? Didn't Joan Jet? Joan Jet. Yeah, of course. You know what would be cool on this would be like a stacked um, Jeff Beck Duncan. Yeah, thing. yeah. Because it fits right into the fits same right coil on. spot in the JB. You, you guys are crazy, man. Why would you do? Why would you do that? Because For the money that that, that you'd spend on this, just true. keep it like no, that I and go. True. If if you were gonna go ahead and two Demarzio X two ends. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, I mean, these aren't much to plug in, but man, to play as a, as a guitar. Oh, you know, amazing. the most expensive one that I've seen is probably the one I'm holding in my hands right, right now. Right, like Three thousand right. bucks. That's 3, a sixty-two. Three thousand bucks for a million maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, this one's got a slightly more narrow neck. I yes. reckon. Uh, let's tune her up here. Did he just brush your hand away? Uh, no, I was just going to tune her up. I thought he was like... No, I, was I, got I, I got this. I got this. I felt something. This one's better electronically. This one kicks out with the ass electronically. Plug down. I'm just saying. Feels better, but this one has more tone. Well, well it's got balls. Balls, as they say in New York, right? It's got balls. Balls. Challenge. Oh, are we moving into our left handed We are portion? moving into okay. the left handed portion yeah. of the second. The carbon copy at, version. At, uh, at Groom Guitars, at this very moment, are two of the best left handed guitars I have ever seen. Um, these are these guitars are so cool, it makes me want to be left handed. I mean, what is this? What is this thing? 63? 63 special. 63, 63 special. Yeah. I mean, this thing is awesome. All right. <laughs> Ah, 
say that the last dozen times I've seen you, yeah. you've made comment on that yeah. particular instrument. And I've gotten fatter. Uh, <laughs> you know what, man? I think it's the guitar that makes her ass. Uh, that's, that's I thought that's where you were going with the last couple of times I've seen no. you. <laughs> give him another lefty. Nice. Just give him a lefty. Yeah, just keep going, bro. All right, let's tune this bad boy seems to be up. doing okay with yeah, it. Yeah, uh, this thing is like brand new. What year is this? Oh man, 58. 58. 58. Left hand. Find another one. No I'm surprised one. it's still here. 58 sure. Esquire. Is there any left handed homeschoolers out there? This is a cool guitar. Another one, light as a feather. Beautiful. Look at this finish. Look at the beautiful condition of this instrument. Jeez. When's the last time you saw a 58 Esquire? Yeah. And when's the last time you saw one in this condition? Yeah, let's see if I can do this. That's hard, man. I can't do that. Before about on the on the yes. Yes. up pick yeah right. backwards right that's that's you don't got that anymore. yeah. It's crazy. 
guitars are always hot you know uh, we didn't really we don't really ever you and I touch on the Fender custom shop no. stuff yeah but that's uh, that's a big that's a big deal for us yeah, um, it. it seems like less and less uh, guitar shops have any kind of a selection of Fender custom shop stuff and it's popular and people want it right and we have a great selection and that's how that's that, good stuff it's it's very sellable. Right. It's very worth it for the price. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, has anything, has any particular vintage guitar has gone up in value more than others lately? Has anything or man, cooled off? Man, I tell you, like, um, you know, one way or another. I'll tell you, I've I've watched um, Gibson flat tops. Yeah. You know, from from the forties and fifties creep up. Yes. You know, and I think I still think they're undervalued. Yeah. But we were just talking about LOOs going yes. for seven, eight thousand dollars. Right. I mean, I'm still used to them being by forty five hundred right. bucks. Sure. You know, maybe a handful of years. Right. Ago. Um, really, three thirty fives are they hot or are they cold? Three thirty fives are hot. Um, but what people are starting to slowly realize is, so let's grab let's grab this again just for illustration purposes. Yeah. I give it to you since you're the only one. Well, Right. Of us not holding one of those. Right. So you're dealing with PAFs. Yeah. You know, you're dealing with a, you know, the wiring harness. So why why is this under a hundred thousand dollars? Right. But a fifty-eight Les Paul is two hundred thousand dollars. Why right. is that? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, We've had this conversation yeah. how many times? Absolutely. A times. million times. Right. Right. You know what else is is another great one? This is the one that that gets me. Is there some correction that needs to be made in prices, which will happen? That's mm -hmm. why there's meat on the bones at 335 to go up, you know, right. but it's, you know, whatever. But here's the thing that gets me, is you take an instrument like this, right? Alkaiola from 60, what is it, 62? 66. 66. 66, that's it. So if, if the Gibson Custom Shop were to remake this instrument today, a reproduction of this instrument, it would go through their custom shop and it would be $10,000. Yes. The original... $5, it's five thousand. The original, fully restored, fretted soup to nuts with everything that we laid out and how, how amazing it makes it. Um, that's something I'll never understand. When you can buy a, a J forty five or a J fifty for ten or fifteen thousand dollars, it's amazing. Or a custom shop recreation of that They're, for we 10, just we we've had them here recently. Know? We've had custom shop yeah forty fives in in the shop recently. And you're right. Uh, yeah. The price point has where to. Do you, where yeah. do you want to? Where, where do you want to draw the line with that? What makes sense? Yeah. You know, if you're if you're a guitar, I'm not going to mention a, a, any particular. But if you're a guitar manufacturer, and you're manufacturing a recreation of your own design from 60 years ago, where do you need to be to make that a profitable thing? That's right. Are you going to pretend like the originals are still, That's you know, right. that don't exist and they're not available? That's right. Or are you just going to put it out there at that price and you're going to uh, basically go fishing and say, well, who'll pay this? Because somebody will always pay it. That's right. right. That's right. But but to me, it's like one of those things. You you went ahead and went to town on this instrument. We, we can talk about how come there isn't a manufacturing company that can recreate their own neck dimensions. Yeah. Martin to Martin, Gibson to Gibson, oh. Fender to Fender. All I'm ask, all I'm saying is, it'd be super sweet if, if a manufacturing company would be able to nail what made them popular from days back. You know, a 54 neck isn't a 54. 
Right. The 60 NAC is close, but it's almost like right. the super normal stimulus of it, where everything is a little bit exaggerated. Kind of like a, everything is a little bit exaggerated. That's why when folks pick up like a 58 reissue with uh, a big Paul, fat neck, yeah. yeah, it was never like no, that. It's no. that super normal stimulus no. of, of like a lot of people think it's fat, so Cartoon let's make it over the top fat. Yeah. And here's the but that deal. Also, most people will never get a chance to play a 58, right. so this is what it feels that's like. Right. It doesn't, you know, right. but and what what's the benchmark for for the average person who picks one up and and differentiates that between a 58 reissue Les Paul and a 59 reissue Les Paul is oh well the 58 is going to have the big, big neck big neck and the 59's got the mid neck and then the 60's got the real thin skinny neck right. when it, in fact it's not yeah. there's there's transitional you know transitional it, periods, right. you you know as as well as I do and you know better than most people because we've all had them in our hands and we've and we've had the historic reissues in our hands um, but that doesn't take away from the the are the reissues a viable instrument? They're beautiful instruments. They're great. They're it's fantastic. But it's one of those things. You did this. You did this uh, showdown video on pedals. Yeah. And everyone was blown away right. how you can blindfolded, no right. bullcrap, nothing. Right. You called out what's what in terms of sound. Okay. If we did this with a blindfold, this would be so easy. It would. Be, it would be like a taste test. Yeah. I just put different guitars in your neck and, and different different guitar necks in your hand, and you tell me new or old. New, and you can do it with gloves on, so you don't even feel finish or anything. Right, right, and you'd be like, new, right, right. old, new, old. I mean, it would be just as quick, you know? This and model I, right here is yeah. one, in my opinion, of all guitars, the, the, there's the biggest chasm between the old ones and the new ones. With the 335s. This, this model. So, 335s, we were, you were asking origin the the what just brought us down this path and yeah. what we were talking about is you know like what's going on with those uh that's what's going on with those 335s have never lost their appeal i get asked i get asked weekly for what 335s do you have they're not looking for right, right. you know 2017 2010 stuff, stuff like that they want to know they want 60s you know yeah. and there's certain 60s that stand out oh, yeah. later 60s right. stand out for a lot of people uh, obviously, the '64, you know, the small block inlays. Mm -hmm. That that's a very popular model. Yeah. And at '50s, '50s, three oh. Still under a hundred. I mean, these are still in the '60s right yeah. now. You can get something beautiful. I thought um, these were these '58s, '59s were thirty grand for a long time. That's right. They they had yeah. they had they had planed off forever. And I remember thinking back in those days, man, what a deal. I know. And if you think about the makeup, we uh, talked about this a million times. The parts are the same as a burst. Dude. The parts are the same as a burst. Humbuckers, <clears throat> no wire ABL, AB, ABR tailpiece, yep. tuners, single, you know, uh, single lines. Yeah. Single line, single ring. Single line, single ring. Only range, missing man. the M sixty nine. That's all I missed. No, the, you know, the what creams of black. The M sixty nine. The M sixty nine is still on that. It, you, yeah, that's a black M sixty nine. Well, I know, but I'm just saying, if you wanted the burst parts, you know, the same. Oh, oh no. You know I, mean? I, I, oh, I you're talking about the cream. The cream. No, no, they, 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 yeah, yeah. I see where he's coming. Um, tri trivia. Uh, this is a pretty easy one for all you gentlemen, but the reason that the cream covered PAF rings, pickup surrounds, were so expensive. Back in the big boom, 2007, when guitars went crazy, it was because there was only one other model of Gibson Electric that had cream pickup surrounds besides Burst. Do you know which model it is? Hmm. Was it on the deluxe, maybe? Gold top. Nope. Well, I mean, aside from the gold top and the and the. Uh, Aside from the Les Pauls. Okay. Oh, aside from Les Pauls. Aside from Les Pauls. Which other Gibson model? Had cream Clean? Yeah. 175? Close. It was Royce Black. You're getting, you're in the right, you're in the right direction. Was that the 350 or something? No. I don't know. Go with it, what is it? 
ninety five. Two ninety five. Yeah, all the all the all the parts on two ninety five is gold. Yeah. I didn't realize they had cream. And cream surrounds, yeah. That's the only so if you wanted to steal a pair of surrounds for for burst, that's where you go. I'm surprised those aren't worth more money. They only made those until what, 59? Yeah, and, they, and most of those were P, P90 equipped. Right. Hmm. So 52 to 59, they made the 295s, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, so it would be P90s till 57. Yeah, right. And then, hmm. and then cream surrounds. That's an interesting. Yeah, man. That's a good piece of trivia. Little That's trivia. an excellent piece of trivia. Take that with you. Uh, what else do we want to tell the homeschooler before we uh, part ways for episode two? Great guitars. I love what we're doing here, man. You, we take a $2,500 melody maker. Totally. $3,000 melody maker. We go all the way up to an incredible $5,000 Al Kaiola. Yeah. Later I could have stopped here. Killer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could have exactly. stopped right here. And, and then buy this. You want to buy this guitar? You're going to buy it? It's killer. I'm not going to buy this guitar. You should buy that. You know, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I don't think that I would give this enough for what it is that I like and for what it is that I'll play. Like right now, I'm infatuated with it. I see the way you're looking at it. I love this guitar. I absolutely love this mm. guitar. But I'd like to I'd like to see somebody who's gonna spend all the time with this guitar and really coax out tone mm. and do their thing and, and be a lot happier with this guitar than I would be. This would be the guitar that I'd be proud to show off, but I don't think I'd give it a lot of play time. So, so your winner out of Everything that Tom was awesome enough to play. Wh which one's your winner? This is my winner. That's your winner. What about yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, man. That thing's special. Um, I liked them all. The only one that I didn't think sounded like much was that red one. Agreed. Right I mean, it plays great. Plays great, but, but yeah, you're right. Much. You're right. The burst. This the, this uh, thing was just, as soon as you plugged it in, it was it was fire. Yeah. Agreed. Fire. Uh, this guitar is outrageous. I know. I know. I know. It's but that's outrageous. this is also what I think everybody expects right. us I to know. say is, is right. the is yeah, the number one. That's why I'm holding this one. This is my winner. This really? is also yeah. the most that's also yeah. the most expensive. This thing kills, man. Yeah. Fire. This thing kills. Yeah, you were able to pull some great tones out of it. It sounded good where that one I could have used a little hotter pickups. Yeah. This one is just cool for what it is. It is cool. And yeah, and I don't think there's anything that you can do yeah. to this to yeah. make it. Oh, there's something you can do to it. Yeah, you have to <laughs> put those, put those, <laughs> put those, yeah. see more down, put the one that was in the, what did you say, the X, the, X2 the X2 X2 the X2 yeah. X2 yeah. But obviously this one's a great guitar, I mean, it, it, everyone expects that, this is great. This is a pro instrument um, right here. The shape right. top is cool. Shape it, top's it, cool. It, it sounds yeah. good. Yeah. I, I Come on, it. man, that, that shape top was mm. dynamic as hell. Your lefty playing on the P90. Yeah. By the way, uh, rocks. But this is I would watch this video just to see that. <laughs> this is mine right here, I would, I would, I would mute, I would mute me and him, and I would just have that. So you playing left? That's going viral. Uh, Uncle Larry plays left-handed. Um, all right, and uh, thanks to Tony Nagy for getting us that for amazing lunch. lunch that we got. Tell today. him about oh, lunch, dude. That place. Tell him about it. Tell him. About it. Should we tell him about? It? Or should we keep it secret? No, we should keep it a secret, but we should just tell them how I much said, they enjoy I just eating said, lunch. I, 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 you didn't say it very loud. There you go. You didn't hear it. Uh, you turn me on to this place. It's a dynamite place, man. You, well, if you guys are in town, you guys should go check it out. And yeah. This is coming from your show. There is a, a, a what is it, a Thai, Thai restaurant? Vietnamese Thai? Vietnamese, Vietnamese Thai. Thai. Vietnamese Thai, Thai right. restaurant called Vin Long. V-I-N-H dash L-O-N-G. And they have the most unbelievable, unbelievable beef and carrots. Beef and carrots. Stew or soup or whatever they call it. But it, 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 it's unbelievable. Stew we just meat. had that uh, for for uh, lunch before this video. And it's got the broth made so by the gods. So special. And, and it that. smells like it in here. Tom. Uh, it's so special. That stuff is so good. Yeah. Um, it's like God's pot roast. It's like God's pot and, roast. And an amazing red sauce. It's fantastic, man. God, it's pretty good. fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, you, know, you know, it's funny. We almost didn't give the name because we didn't want it to like. Right. <laughs> we like it. It's like a hole in the wall little spot, man. Yeah. So we had funny. good lunch. We're not telling you. That's so funny. Uh, uh, what are we forget? I feel like we're forgetting something. Um, little little uh, shout out to Peter. He, he did a beautiful fret job. Uh, yes. uh, you just purchased the what is sixty two three? Sixty two three. Sixty three Strat and uh, one of the repair guys upstairs, uh, Peter Svitek, did a fret job. 
And uh, I, I pulled it this morning. I was even texting. I pulled it this morning, and and uh, what a beautiful fret job that that fella does. It's fantastic. This Where did we learn all that from? Who knows? Yeah, it's weird. Huh? <laughs> but I was just so quick. You're funny. I was so proud of him, man. Watch it. And usually when I look, you know, I, I'm able to look for things or whatever it might be. I was just so happy with that job. And so I kudos to, to Peter. In the Peter, shop. Yeah, my man. And he also fixed that bird up real nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We forgot we to play that we bird. We forgot to play the It's right behind you. It's right behind you, brother. It's right behind you. Let's do it, man. One last Dude, one. I've completely forgot about this. But wait, there's guitar. more. But wait, there's more. It's my old guitar. My goodness. I completely forgot about this. That's thing. right. It's a cool guitar, man. Oh, tell us about this one, Green. So this is my old guitar. I, I traded it to the store some time back. This is going to seem like this, we planted this. No. Year, but this, I literally forgot no, about this. No, not at all. Um, this is a, a cool... Oh, yeah. I was, I was going to mess with your tag again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, uh, uh no, this is a 63. So it, here's the deal, man. The early Firebirds, uh, pre-production 64, they all had an oval heel shape. In 64, when they came out, it, it had that ledge yeah. right on it. So anytime I see something with an oval heel like this, I know that it's a prototype era, what was called a Maverick. And they made 10 or probably 15 of these prototypes for uh, for the Firebird before they nailed it right. I never heard Maverick. Maverick, yeah, that's what Gibson themselves used to call them back then. So when this came along, um, it was great. It was really worked over. It was routed. Everything was it was routed for humbuckers. It was pretty gross looking. So it went upstairs, and a couple of the repair guys they went ahead and repaired it in a beautiful way. They actually skimmed just the top layer so they can fill all the holes and uh, the bad routes. They plugged it, reskinned that top rerouted everything and they color matched the center to match the outside so then wow. it looks fantastic let me ask you a um, question yeah who were the uh who were the guys that had their hands on this guitar which repair guys it, it, the, the bulk of it was uh tony Nagy. he's my repair shop manager tony's amazing um, oh, you guys borrowed one of my birds that's to right measure for dimensions that's right yeah and that's right and uh and it was done super well it's got uh antiquities in it newer hardware newer things fret dress um but it is what it is. It's a it's a super early uh, Firebird, and I love them. I think yeah, they're great. Lightweight. Mm -hmm. That one's a nice, nice balance. And it has a different feel to it. Then even the sixty fours. And I apologize for not. Uh, it was hidden behind you. I, I couldn't see it yeah. from where I was sitting, so I do apologize. Apologize to you guys too. Great. Amazing neck. It's kind of narrow feeling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I like it though. Kind it's like unique. That. It's unique. It's it's. In, by '64, they had it figured out. The '63s were a little bit more. Let's hear this thing. Okay.
needs a little more tea. Uh, this neck pickup is dope. <laughs> for things I feel it's more you know you can kind of get that snap yeah I mean you're 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 using a combination I of do. picking your fingers constantly yeah and I, I I was doing that for a lot of times and then yeah. I realized that I dropped the pick and I right. just would never go after the pick I would just it didn't right. matter to me right. yeah man Dude. Awesome. Yeah, great guitars, man. All right. Stuff, uh, guys. Uh, I gotta go pick up my kids from school. So that's always good. This what are you guys doing the rest of the day? I'm gonna go with you. Yeah, let's go pick up the kids from school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is I'm great. Go try to if you made it this far, uh, we appreciate it. Um, I know these, uh, we get off a little long winded sometimes, but we're talking about meaningful stuff, you know? We're getting into the weeds about this esoteria. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah. But uh, um, anything, you know, if you guys got any ideas about, like, what you what you want to see in these monthly groom get-togethers, please tell us. Right? Absolutely. Sure. Like, what would be cool ideas, right? Because we're... I'd yeah, love to, I'd know, love to touch on all, you know, all, all of this stuff. involve Corey taking his clothes off, because yeah, no. we do not... Nobody wants to see you. That's not happening. <laughs> That's not happening. We'll figure it out. Maybe the repair shop. Maybe the repair we'll do something shop. with the repair guys. Oh, that would be fun. That'd be good. That would love to introduce them to all the repair guys. I'd love it. I'd that'd love it. They're great guys. They're all. Let available. us know what you guys want to see. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. Right. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang up now. Bye.